I'm director of Twitch's Developer Success Group. Uh, we are uh, dedicated to helping game developers of all shapes and sizes be successful redundantly uh, on our platform. Um, and today we're going to be talking about mobile games. Um, I'm really excited to see that Casual Connect has a esports and community track. Um, casual and esports don't tend to <laughs> overlap too much, but uh, but we will identify places where they do today and just talk about the, the state of the mobile gaming market while we do, so let's jump in. A uh, little bit about our agenda before we get started. Um, we're gonna start talking about the existing mobile gaming live stream landscape. Uh, this is very different than uh, video on demand, so the, the videos you see on YouTube and other um, on-demand platforms, we're specifically going to talk about live video content. Why mobile games, mo you as mobile game developers, should care about Twitch. And then once we all agree on that, we're going to talk about, okay, now that we care, what should we do about it? Um, so let's jump in. So mobile gaming live streaming. Uh, I'm going to start talking about Japan. Um, obviously, Japan has a much more mature mobile gaming market than the, uh, um, the Western world. So Puzzles and Dragons is one of the biggest games in Japan right now. I think they're on their fourth year of the Japan Cup, which is their kind of eSports tournament. Uh, they run it every year out of Tokyo, the finals. Um, in 2015, this is a picture from there, they had 78,000 live attendees watching competitive mobile Puzzles and Dragons. Um, many, many thousands, thousands of more watching on live streams on Nico Nuko and platforms over there. Um, Beyond Puzzles and Dragons, you have uh, Monster Strike. They just announced this year their esports plans. Um, the Monster Strike Grand Prix, that has about a half million dollar prize pool. Um, but despite all of this publisher content, uh, what you actually see in Japan, uh, which isn't too unlike in the US and, 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 and Europe, is influencers rule. So as publishers bring new games to market, new mobile games, um, they prefer to have the gaming influencers be their ambassadors, be the face of their games, um, rather than them presenting themselves. Um, there's a bunch of these influencers. Um, this particular event was sponsored by Google Play, so it was streamed on, on um, YouTube Live. But um, one interesting thing about the Japanese influencers, which is different than the United States, is um, they have a lot lower content quality than you might expect. And uh, they could have higher quality, but what we find there is that um, by having a lower quality of content, it allows the consumer base in Japan to feel closer to that broadcaster and to feel more connected. And um, it's just one way in, in which they build that connection. Uh, but these guys have a ton of influence in the gaming industry. Um, one of the things that happened as a result of live stream content in Japan uh, is known as the Grand Blue Fantasy Scandal. Um, I don't know if you heard about this, but Grand Blue Fantasy is, is one of the mobile gaming, um, uh, popular mobile free-to-play mobile games in Japan. Um, they use the gacha monetization system where you buy an item and you get a random award. Was after, um, was actually much less likely to occur than what the company had previously advertised. And so, of course, it, I think he ended up spending between six and $7,000 just buying packs and packs and packs and trying to get this character until he finally, you know, and eventually once he finally did, um, so many people watched this video and were having the same experience at the same time, the company was exposed for lowering the odds of getting that particular item. Um, they ended up having to issue refunds and now the Japanese government is actually, there's concern that they're, they're gonna come back in and regulate the gacha system um, within the Japanese mobile market. So all of this was the result of this one live stream influencer, and so uh, needless to say, mobile gaming live stream is huge in Japan, and uh, while a little bit different, um, uh, very, very successful there. Uh, in Korea, even though Korea is the birthplace of esports, you actually don't see a lot of mobile gaming esports in Korea, um, but instead what you see is all um, publishers and developers leverage live video to make announcements, to, to, to do patch updates, um, and, and to generally market your game. Not unlike what you see a lot of um, publishers and developers do in the United States. So Summoner's War, this is a, they do massively, like highly produced announcements for their updates. They, they, this PR event's called The Next Stage. This is a, a, a studio called Arch Bears. Um, they do regular streams with their community, you know, just to get feedback, to tell them about the upcoming patches and to do developer Q&A. Uh, you got a ton of media companies that use live video to, to um, produce uh, um, content and, and publishers, developers work really hard to get their games onto those live streams. Again, 
just like you see in the United States. Um, Net marble, Stone Age is, is the one that they're talking about here. Uh, but beyond that, one of the interesting things you see in Korea is a very active participation by publishers and developers in, um, in the community themselves. So I think this says what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. One of the, uh, the GM of Korea, Twitch Korea sent me this. But basically, one of the things that happens is uh, publishers for rewards for content creators. And they'll say, if you stream this amount, then you get this in-game item X, right, or this character X. Um, of course, it varies by game, and, 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 uh, but it's, it's very, very common, and it's just um, you know, one of the ways in which publishers and developers um, support streaming, and, and obviously, you know, through this, you can see that they value it, and they see um, it's, a, it's a huge part of that, that market there in Korea. So what about Twitch? Um, we know Twitch is big, but we don't see the type of traction among mobile games and live streaming of mobile co gaming content there. And so why is that? Well, we know that on mobile, Twitch is huge. Um, that is, a, over a third of all minutes watched on Twitch happen on mobile devices. So we know that Twitch users own mobile devices and they use them. So why aren't they streaming games? Why aren't people talking about this? Well, the answer is actually that they are. And this has been growing incredibly quickly. Since the end of 2015, we've actually seen about a 5x increase in the consumption mobile-only content on Twitch. It doesn't include games like Hearthstone that are cross-platform PC and mobile. This is only games that are dedicated iOS and Android and uh, maybe Windows Phone. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's driven by, by a few titles. So um, one is Vainglory. So Vainglory was our fastest growing mobile game of 2015. Uh, they re recently announced a partnership with Twitch. We're helping them to produce and promote all of their, their eSports content around their game. Um, Clash Royale has obviously been uh, a huge mobile game this year, has seen a ton of traction on Twitch, uh, and we've seen Supercell super involved with promoting and supporting their community, as well as, uh, you know, this is a picture from their first ever Clash Royale tournament in Helsinki. Uh, and then, of course, this past month, we've seen Pokemon Go. Um, it took a while for broadcasters on Twitch to figure out the best way to, to stream Pokemon Go, but they're figuring it out, and Pokemon Go has been growing on the platform ever since. Uh, this particular broadcaster, uh, Deadpool Plays, he, he, he has a phone that he's attached to a selfie stick that points at him, and then he has a second phone that he's playing Pokemon Go on, and then he broadcasts those back up to a cloud. So broadcasters are innovating. We're seeing um, there's obviously demand for this content, and so we're seeing broadcasters innovate to, to satisfy that demand. Uh, and then, of course, you can't have a cultural phenomenon on Twitch without a Twitch Plays. So uh, I don't know actually how this works, but apparently someone made a Twitch Plays Pokemon Go, which you can check out uh, later today. Mobile gaming content is growing on Twitch. That's great for Twitch. Well, why, as you, a developer, should care? Well, the obvious reason is Twitch drives user acquisition. Um, we assume Twitch can drive installs. We know, based on data, that Twitch can drive game sales. Uh, so this is um, research done by Twitch's data science team. Uh, we have a couple million Steam ac connected accounts on Twitch. And using that um, information, we're able to see um, if a user watched a particular video on Twitch. And then within a 24 hour period, that game showed up in that user's Twitch, or sorry, that user's Steam library. Then we attribute that game sale to, okay, Twitch drove that game sale. So within that concise definition, uh, we see Twitch has successfully driven nearly 30% of all sales of several of these games. Punch Club, The Calling, Tom Clancy's Division, and others. Um, but this isn't news to anyone. I mean, I think, you know, based on press and developer reports, we know that Twitch is an effective discovery mechanism and driver of user acquisition for games. The thing that we find much more interesting um, and, and Arguably more important is that Twitch users are retained better than non-Twitch users. So the way to read this graph is, if I watched a video of a certain game on Twitch in a particular week, then I am 5% more likely to come back and play that same game the next week if I hadn't watched that video, than users that did not watch a video on Twitch. Um, now, of course, you can say, well, Twitch users are, are, could be more core players. Um, they could, you know, be just bigger 
uh, bigger gamers overall, and we agreed. So we actually dug more deeply into this, and we said, okay, um, if a user plays a game a certain amount of times a week, does that make them more likely to then play again the next week? And the answer is yes. And, and we are able to say, okay, well, for Twitch viewers, if we compare Twitch viewers who play a game for a certain amount of days in a certain week compared to non-Twitch viewers that play that same game, the same number of games in the same week, well, what's the difference there? And we see it, it varies by game by game. Uh, there are certain games where being a Twitch viewer helps massively. Um, there, there are certain games that being a Twitch viewer helps not quite as much. But on average, watching Twitch increases the average retention of any game by 3%. And this includes single player games. This includes games that weren't even intended to, to uh, retain well. Um, a lot of community-based games like Team Fortress 2, the average increase in retention for that game is 30%. So for mobile gaming, this is huge. Retention is a massively hard number to move. And what's more, it compounds. I encourage everyone here, if you have a, a, a player funnel, um, to put 3% week over week retention into that funnel and see what it does to your player base over time. Because I guarantee you, you're, after a year, you're gonna get a massive number on the end in terms of how many numbers it, it um, how many players it helps you guys gain. Uh, it makes user acquisition cheaper and it helps games go viral. You can't have a viral game without retaining the users in the first place. So uh, this is the, the big takeaway for Twitch. Um, and, and the other important thing about this is this is something that can't be bought, right? You can buy views, right? You can, you can pay streamers to play your game. And out of result of that, you can get user acquisition. But turning players into fans uh, is something you can only do through community investment. So how do I Twitch? How do I do this? Well, looking at popular PC and console games today, you can see they have great content, they promote, promote it to their community. They are actively encouraging their player base to become fans of the game beyond just players, right? Um, it's, they understand that a Twitch viewer, um, a player who is also a Twitch viewer is a more valuable user than not, right? And they take steps to actively promote Twitch content to that player base. Uh, so you see this in Counter-Strike, you see this in Rocket League, you see this in Vainglory. Vainglory is one of the first mobile games that has actively promoted Esports and, and community content back to their player base. And as a result, you know, it's helped us grow mobile content on Twitch. Um, and so we think there's a lot more mobile games that can and should be doing this. Um, now there's a secret here that I'm going to share with you guys. Even with games that spend millions and millions of dollars on flashy esports tournaments and original content, uh, so no matter how big and flashy and, you know, all the examples I just showed there were, were esports based, um, you can get almost all of that benefit without an esports league just by promoting community produced content. And what I mean by that is promote streamers, right? We see Overwatch doing this. They understand it. They understand the importance of community. They understand that community is something you need to invest in and in turn, that community will turn return value back at you. That was the definition of community. We see this in T Fortress 2. Uh, we, Korea, right, they understand the value of community. They've been investing in it in different ways with you know, the in-game items that we talked about it before. And we've seen it just recently in mobile. Uh, Clash Royale has been very active in supporting their community. And as a result, again, we see that growth on Twitch. Now, the interesting thing about this is it's good for the game, but when you think about it at an individual broadcaster perspective, these promotions can be game-changing. Now let's take a look at a, a, um, a, a mobile, a, a Twitch broadcaster who focuses on mobile content. So this was a, a broadcaster, and you can see um, between, at the end of February, early March, he got in-game promotion from, from the game that he was, he was broadcasting. And as a result, his views went from not that much to okay, this guy's actually now generated a community, a serious broadcaster, all because all the, the, the company had to do was recognize that he was producing good content. It was on brand. It was safe. It was something that they wanted more people to see, and they promoted him in the game. And what's more, not only did he, did, is now he generating a ton of viewership, but before this particular broadcaster, he was part-time. He was broadcasting on nights and weekends, but with the support he got from the publisher, well, you can see this is broadcast hours. He's now full-time. 
So effectively, by supporting and investing in community, you've just created a full-time employee or evangelist for your game just by giving some, some, some real estate in a way that benefits you back in the first place. Um, and this is hugely, hugely, hugely powerful. Broadcasters will choose to play certain games based on the fact that we know that game's community friendly. We know that they um, support their community and there's the potential that I might get featured because my viewership might do this, right? Um, and on that, if you're reaching out to streamers and you say, hey, by the way, we'd love you to play my game and in return, we'll give you this featured placement, it's a huge carrot you can use to convince other broadcasters that, that might be a good target for your game that haven't played yet to hop in and give it a try. Um, and this is especially important because smaller broadcasters are obviously the ones that are disproportionately more likely to benefit from this, but if you look at what size influencers um, influence game sales on Twitch? It's the mid-tier guys. The mid-tier broadcasters drive nearly half of all game sales that we're able to attribute to Twitch watching. And you know, if you think about it in a large standpoint, large broadcasters are great, but it's kind of like being in a stadium, right? You're you're just kind of being talked at. Where mid-tier guys, they're the ones you know. If you're going to scroll down in a directory and find your guy, you're a huge fan of him. So you trust his opinion. Um, so getting those guys on board and, and playing your game and involved in your community is massively, massively important. And these tools, being able to, to offer them these carrots, well, it's, whether it's in-game promotion, whether it's Twitter callouts, whether it's in-game content, whether you're going to drop by his channel and just hang out and chat. Uh, I mean, there's a million ways in which you can support broadcasters. Um, but um, don't discount the little guys. Um, if you don't, have community content, then build your own. Bangalore has been doing dev streaming since the game was announced, right? They do it on a weekly basis. It's a way to connect with your community. Um, something, again, we saw in, in huge numbers in, in, in Korea. Um, but an easy way to, to create that interface and start to, to build those brand, brand ambassadors that can potentially be um, influencers for your game. Um, and then something that we haven't seen really at all in, in, in at least Western-focused mobile gaming uh, I'm, not, I'm not as sure, at least in, in, in Asia, but is open development. So this Reddit, this is a Reddit post by John Smedley, back when he was still at Sony Online Entertainment, announcing that H1Z1 existed. And he did it on Reddit because he wanted to create a dialogue with his community, right? He wanted, he was inviting the community to participate in the development of H1Z1. And by doing that, not only did he create a platform for feedback, uh, but he started creating those brand evangelists early, right? He started working with the broadcasters when they were really small, and as the game grew, these broadcasters grew right alongside with them. And now H1Z1 is one of the consistently largest games on Twitch. Um, so huge benefits to this, as well as you know free QA because you can just go and watch how you know people um, uh, engage with their game. So uh, love to see more open development in mobile gaming. So this is what Twitch developer success is all about. Um, we believe that there's a lot of opportunity on Twitch for, for game developers of all shapes and sizes, especially mobile game developers. Um, we've seen that there's obviously uncapped potential on Twitch for mobile games. So if you are interested in making your mobile game more stream friendly, uh, then let us know. Um, you can reach out to us at Twitch Dev on Twitter. Um, if you go to dev.twitch.tv, you can sign up for our mailing list and register for a developer account. Um, and then also, I know this talk didn't cover it, but if you want more information on specific game design techniques, uh, I'm giving another talk at 3.30 on Wednesday um, at Amazon's Developer Today in Salon 7. So um, you can come by and learn a little bit about ways in which you can actually design your game to be more stream -free. So quick recap, uh, mobile gaming live streaming is growing like crazy on Twitch. Um, Remember, viewers, your game, Twitch is not only a good avenue to acquire, it's, it's also a fantastic, so 3% week over week on average. I'm serious about going back and putting that in your spreadsheet. 3% doesn't seem like a small, uh, a large number, but compounding interest is quite a quite an amazing thing. Um, support and participate in the growth of your community. Communities by nature are things that many people uh, contribute into and many people benefit from. And then reach out to Twitch. We can help.
So thank you. Kind of curious if you see any new trends or anything on Twitch's roadmap on connecting with kind of mobile devs um, to integrate Twitch, you know, more seamlessly, I guess, in, in their apps. Sure. Uh, so for games that are um, making Twitch a large part of their core strategy, one of the big opportunity spaces we see is uh, direct integrations with the Twitch platform. So an example here is uh, if a broadcaster wants to organize a match and invite his viewers, well, that's something that's really hard to do, right? You have to um, ask every viewer what his like in-game ID is, and then he has to like, especially on mobile, you have to like tap in every single thing, right? And and you have to 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 do that for each user that wants to invite. By the time you create a lobby, you know the first two guys have gone to bed because it's taken 20 minutes, right? So you got to invite. Anyway, that that is an example of a process that can be made one click with a Twitch platform integration. So um, we're really excited about that. We're working with some mobile game companies on, on features like that. Um, but we think there's a large opportunity space there for, for, for games in general. So do you feel like there are specific genres of mobile game that might work better on Twitch than others? Uh, yes. So if you came to me and said, OK, we want to make my narrative-driven, single-player, premium game more Twitch-friendly, I would say, well, you know, focus on the user acquisition part of this equation, don't worry as much about retention, because one, it's not part of your business model in the first place. Um, so yes, absolutely. There, there are certain, the, Twitch is a long form, um, uh, uh, long form content consumption medium, right? Um, the average Twitch user watches for uh, an individual stream for 20 minutes and daily for about 93 minutes. Uh, because of that, it, it, certain games do much better than others. Um, but we're still exploring. I mean, uh, I, I don't think anyone, when Pokemon Go first came out, thought that it would be a thing on Twitch, and people wanted to watch it. And then you get broadcasters doing crazy things to make that possible. So there's still a lot we don't know. But yes, I do agree that certain genres are better suited for Twitch than others. All right. Thank you, guys.